Hi everyone. Glad to see you here on a Tuesday afternoon at six o'clock here in Toronto. And I am so glad you are here. We've got people from Texas. We've got people from BC, from Tennessee. Oh, so glad that you're all here. It's been a while since I've done a Facebook Live and uh, <laughs> just a little nervous whether you're, you are going to be here or not. So um, I just would like to take a second to inter uh, introduce the two gentlemen who are here with me today. We have Ray Evertson from RGE Travels and his partner in crime here, John Eimrich of RGE Travels as well. And Cruz. And it is just, uh, it's going to be May 13th, um, which I'm going for. About eight months from now. Eight months from now. Okay. So um, the sound should be here. And there's just, sound now. Yeah, we've got sound going. So uh, they're just 20, uh, 26 seconds behind us. So, <laughs> um, so let's go with some of the first questions that everybody asks. So where is the cruise leaving from, Ray? It is leaving from Vancouver, British Columbia, our neighbors in Canada. And it's and a one it, Go ahead. I was saying it is a one-way cruise to Alaska, right? One-way cruise to Alaska, and we stop in Ketchikan, Icy Strait Point, Juneau, Skagway, Hubbard Glacier we cruise by, and then it ends in Seward, Alaska. Now, but the trip doesn't the stop cruise. there. <laughs> it doesn't stop there, though. <laughs> Go ahead, John. Yes, because our trip goes on a two-day excursion on a cruise tour um, up into the Denali area. So we go two days there, and then we fly out of Anchorage, coming back home. And the trip from Seaward to Denali, is that a cruise, uh, a tour bus, or how does that, that work? That is a, it's what they call a deluxe motor coach. <laughs> and basically you're going from, you'll take a little tour of Seward before you're going on your way to Anchorage. And then from Anchorage, you're going into Denali. And Denali, of course, is the big um, attraction because of the, the wildlife and everything that you get to see. Uh, the, the park extends all the way 90 miles, past 90 miles in, inward. And um, we overnight at the Denali Park Village. Then the next day, we are doing a little more about Denali. Uh, you get to see the rolling tundra, forest, some more wildlife, and then we take a bus, the motor, deluxe motor coach again, that takes us to Talkanitba. Tal I can never say Tal this. Tal there we go, that one. And that one, we go board the Wilderness Express, which is actually the uh, Florida, tra Florida train, excuse me, that's where I'm at, the Alaska train. And that is a, an extremely... Um, the views on that trip is just incredible going into Talkeetna. And that's the closest that we'll get actually to um, Mount Denali, correct? That's how you pronounce it. It's Mount Denali now. Correct. Then um, we, we from 8 p.m. after we do that, we go into Anchorage. And then we, fly, we stay overnight in Anchorage and fly out of Anchorage. This is what they call the Denali Express. They, of course, have um, longer excursions or trips uh, on that part, but we chose this because of people, a lot of people's schedules, but it gets you to a taste of what the uniqueness of Denali and Alaska, so that if you want to ever go back, you can take a longer trip. Right. I always hear from everybody that I've told about this Alaskan cruise that has been on this cruise, almost everyone says that if they only had one cruise to go on again, they would take this cruise to Alaska. It's supposed to be absolutely fantastic. It is absolutely, the, the scenery is just incredible. And we did a, last time we did Alaska, we just did a round trip from Vancouver and it returned back to uh, Seattle. And it touched some of these places, but we did not go up to the Hubbard Glacier uh, did not have icy straight point either, but
But once you go past and go up to the northern part as you're leaving the coast, which, you know, is not too far from Canada, right? Because it's following us all the way up on that side. But going up to Seward, it is just an incredible scenery that you just don't see. The fjords and everything are just different. And um, it's a lot different than if you do the round trips out of Seattle, like the one they're doing this year is out of Seattle. Um, the scenery and the glaciers, and, the, and it's just completely different. Is anytime you can go, you can go on the exact same trip uh, the following year, and it will be a different experience. And that's the uniqueness of about Alaska. So I guess if it's leaving <laughs> from Vancouver, if you're not Canadian, then you need a passport, right? Absolutely. For our American friends, we'll ask the Canadians as well, because you'll need your passport to come back into uh, to disembark in Seward in the United States. You do need to have a passport. It can't be a passport card. It has to be a full passport. Um, anybody that may say that they do have the enhanced U.S. driver's license, that will only work for domestic travel in the United States. Unfortunately, and fortunately, we are leaving from Vancouver, BC, which is a stunning city. Yeah, it's pretty fantastic. Yeah. Um, so how much does the trip cost? That usually depends on which category of accommodation you would like to travel in. If basically, I wanna say, cause this is a trip on Celebrity Cruise Lines and if many of your um, fans and people that are attending our uh, live feed today haven't been on celebrity since the shutdown they've reinvented themselves and their minimum package that they offer will always include your alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages sodas uh, coffees teas juices specialty coffees and bottled water your wi-fi and your gratuity the reason why i say this is because Celebrity is the only company that has has kind of rethought itself and said, what can we do to make it better and easier without nickel and diming the customer? And in general, they have stunning ships. It's very contemporary, um, modern, but yet um, comfortable. They, uh, so if you would like to do an inside stateroom, and if people are not familiar with inside staterooms, that is basically a hotel room that does not have a window in it. It may have mirrors and beautiful decor and so forth in it, but it's an inside stateroom category. And basically, you, if you're going to spend a lot of time outside and out in the ship, that's what I would recommend you to do. But if you're the type that likes to see scenery, then the next one would be the ocean view stateroom. Your inside stateroom right now starts at about the $2,640, $2,640 per person. That includes all port charges and and taxes and fees that the cruise lines charge. The next step above that is your ocean view. And an ocean view, view can be a square picture window or it could be a big round porthole. I mean, one that you can actually sit in if you could sit in it. And that's actually the next best thing. And I would suggest that because the scenery, anytime that you're going up and you know through the fjords and going through the inside passage, there's always something to see. Ocean view staterooms start at $28.99 per person. That's all inclusive. And then lastly, you have your veranda stateroom, which is just an expensive way of saying balcony. And that's your balcony stateroom. That is your the best out of the three, I think, because you can you want to sit outside as much as you can. And when the, the captain announces, you'll see parts of a glacier pieces of ice that have broken and it's floating by and the intense blue that you see in it, you wanna be able to run out and see that, especially because they'll make announcements inside the cabin during those times. And of course, there's always the concierge level staterooms as well as aqua class, sky suite and your other suites. And that is always available. And upon request, we can give you the, the price on that. The veranda stadium starts at thirty-four forty-nine per person. So one reason why um, I started this, I started a Facebook group on my page, is because some people are looking for a roommate. They'd like to come, but they don't have a roommate. 
So what is the procedure? Like, did you say that they have to book together at the same time? They, in the perfect world, it, yes, because um, you can't put a deposit in on a stateroom with just one person unless that person decides that they're going to put the full deposit in and say later on they're going to sure they're going to fill that with a roommate. That is possible still to do, but if you're looking for a roommate, this venue that we're doing right now, the group um, that you've created that. Karen has created for Just Get It Done Quilts for this trip is an excellent venue for people to meet and chat and see if there's a compatibility of being roommates together. Um, so I, made, I will say that, go ahead. No, I'm just saying I made this Facebook group and made a private group so that people could meet with other people, like make a call out for another roommate so that you can organize it and and start a conversation with them on your own um, so that yes. you can go on to Ray and and um, and then make the booking. So I've got a question here from Laura Henning. She says, is this Canadian dollars or US? This is John. all US dollars. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sadly, it's in all US dollars. Okay. So all U.S. dollars, which um, luckily right at the moment is a decent exchange rate for Canadians. <laughs> uh, uh, Jean Fitzgibbons has asked dates. We said this earlier, but it's May 13th to May 22nd, right? Correct. That is correct. Okay. So um, we're at C. I understand seven days and then we're on the tour bus for two days. And then that we is fly correct. Do we fly home to wherever we're going or do we fly back to Vancouver and then go to wherever we're going? You fly from wherever if if you're wherever your home of record is, that's where you fly to from Anchorage. The most likely to be via some connecting city, depending on what airline and so forth that that is booked. Speaking of airlines, uh, we also suggest we have the capabilities of assisting with airfare, and a lot of times we want to suggest doing it through us because we book it through Celebrity Air. And the only reason why I like that, there's two reasons. Usually you get a better rate. Secondly, if the plane should get delayed someplace in a connection in Chicago, a connection in Seattle, um, no, not even, yeah, even in Seattle, because if people hop over to Vancouver that way with the connections or a connection in Dallas, whatever the case may be, if the airplane is delayed, it is celebrity's responsibility to get you to the ship. And if they, if they still leave without you, it's their responsibility to get you to the next port. So you always want to have that safety net behind you in that way. Okay. So we have another question here from K Webb Mayfield. What non-quilting activities are available during the cruise for her spouse? There's no rock climbing like on Royal Caribbean, the sister company, okay, or um, skydiving or uh, skydiving on, on Royal Caribbean as well. But they have plenty of things to do on board. They will have um, other excursions that have nothing to do with quilting. Um, there's fishing excursions, there's law, um, what do you call that? Uh, totem pole making, logging type of excursions. There's plenty of outdoor um, activities. Activities. And on the ship itself, they will have all kinds of things. Of course, all your, your um, venues on board the ship are open when we're at sea and when we're in port and they have different types of activities. They have gaming activities, they have um, scavenger hunts. It just depends on what is your, what, what you want to do. They will have that. The celebrity has different type of concierge level type of things. If someone wants to do, we had a uh, family member wanted to do one of the float planes to fly over the fjords. Well, celebrity didn't have a specific excursion for that, but they, made the arrangements for them. So there is plenty to do that has nothing to do with quilting. And they have onboard movies, uh, first run movies. God, John, I'm going blank. What else that? Wine tastings. Uh, 
plenty of wine tasting. Because your your uh, alcoholic beverages are all included, your bars are open just about 24-7 while you're on the ship. Um, but you also have the, uh, the ability to have all kinds of soft drinks at any time, too. And there's plenty to eat. That's one thing that, you know, if, if you haven't been on a cruise, you're not going to starve. And one thing I have to say about Celebrity Cruise Lines, their cuisine is in the regular without specialty restaurants or anything like that is at the top. But one reason why I chose this Alaskan cruise was that it's the trip of a lifetime. You know, like the yeah. it's the scenery, it's the excursions, it's the wildlife, it's all that that you're going to see, the quilting is attached to all that as opposed to another cruise where sewing is the big thing and you never get off the ship. There's a lot of historical aspects to this trip as well because of how the, how the state was, became the United States, how it all started, its heritage, its history and so forth. So you're going to see a lot of that on the cruise itself and you'll have, also have commentary about that as well basically on this ship and it may be interesting for the folks uh, uh, a bit like they may be missing out the ones that are doing the quilting while they're on the ship because there'll be a lot of commentary where the captain will and they have special people that are um, guides on the ship as well that will make commentaries about what you're passing by and what you're going to see if you're going to see whales and so forth so Quilters will hear this wherever they're at, especially if they may be in their classrooms, and then they're going to probably want to run out to see it. So that this is the type of cruise that it's all about, because as Karen said, it is a once in a lifetime. It's one of your bucket lists that's local, that you don't have to fly for hours to get to around the country, around the world. Let me let me just put it like this, Karen. Every color of blue that you have in your background, you will see in the waters and in the ice on this trip. Great, that's wonderful. And uh, one of the next couple of questions, GM, uh, Gene Fitzgibbons has asked, do I need to bring a sewing machine? And the answer is no. Um, the classes that I'm organizing are all without your sewing machine. Um, there's gonna be two meet and greets. Um, I'm going to have um, a sewing hour every day, but it's all going to be about hand sewing. It's going to be uh, one of the classes is about English paper piecing, and the other class is going to be about color. Now, um, I, I'm just, you know, again, the trip is about Alaska, so I don't want anybody to be burdened with two bags of luggage just to carry your stash, your equipment, and your tools um because that's not going to be a lot of fun but there's going to be um uh quilt shops along the way and i am working with ray and john um to organize an excursion one day i think we talked about juno might be the best place to do it yes um well where we'll have a bus if we have enough people and we will have um a tour we'll go around a couple of the quilt stores find a place for lunch and uh, we'll do it together. It'll be very exclusive just to our group. We can, as long as we have 25 and that's just our people. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so we'll get together at some point every day. We'll talk about what we've done that day. Um, spouses can join in the circle if they want. Um, I know my husband's coming along on the trip. Not sure if he's gonna be that interested. He'll probably let me <laughs> have you guys all to myself. And, uh, yeah, and uh, uh, I'm, I've got the call out to people who have already been on the cruise talking about what stores we should go to, what activities we should go to. I think we're going to find more um, crafts out there as well, other than just quilting that we can incorporate back into our quilting. So absolutely, I think we're going to have a, a lot of sharing. Now, the two classes I just mentioned that we're going to talk about, one is going to be color. Um, I will have a workshop, I will be teaching it, but this is the first time I'll pro I will have the opportunity to teach it in person with actual people. So the next question you may be asking is a quick, uh, kit charge. Um, 
There's not going to be much of a kit. I don't think it will be very expensive. I think the maximum price it's going to be is $50. So don't worry about it being an exorbitant price. And um, I'll have more, I will have more details uh, about them closer to the date. The English exactly. paper piecing one, I am still developing. Um, I'm going to probably be working with a local quilt store to get the fabric swatches. I'll ask you to bring some of your own. Um, I'll get some uh, kits together from from paper piecing for it. So you may not even have to bring anything to do with that. And then the color one is you'll bring swatches of what colors you have. And it will be designing your own color scheme, finding your color zone, and then applying that to an actual pattern. And you can bring along a pattern of your of your own for an example as well. So a little bit different than your regular classes, but I think that's fairly typical to what I do. <laughs> I'm teaching you to think outside the box instead of just teaching you a traditional class. So um, we are at 23 minutes now. Does anybody have any more questions? Um, we have... Excuse me. We have uh, one question from Laura Henning. We'll be putting an update for sure. Uh, Laura, if you go on to justgetitdonequilts.com forward slash events slash crews, um, it will bring you to everything that's up to date at this time. So that means if you go to my, my this is my website. If you go to my website, that's justgetitdonequilts.com and you click on that learn more beside the Alaska button, you'll come to this site and that will give you the brochure. Um, you can book it now and a place for you to ask the questions. You can also, if you haven't done already, you can join the Facebook page where you can ask questions and Ray and John will answer them in there. You can look for a roommate and if anybody has anything to share about going to Alaska, we can talk about those there. Uh, we have a question more. from Ellen. Ellen, yes, the price is per person. Double occupancy. Yes. And then the deadline to register, there is no deadline. It is booking. And you can find to register on the link that um, Karen mentioned, and it'll take you to the flyer, and you just click on to book here. Yeah. And we can have some more get-togethers beforehand. If there's some things that you Absolutely. want to talk about, um, just put that request in the Q&A and... Um, you know, once we've booked, there's going to be other questions that we'll want to ask, like what do we bring and uh, what's the weather going to be looking like? And we may have um, just some protocol updates and things like that. So um, definitely we'll have another Q&A before we'll go. And Laura's asking you, Karen, about the written details on the classes again, the color um, theory. Okay, mm -hmm. so the written details on the classes will be, for the color theory one, will be available beginning of October, October 1st. I'm just hashing out the last details on it. Um, I'm going off with my husband on our first vacation in a little while for, on the weekend, and that's my priority when I get back. So I'll have that all hashed out and probably available October 1. And the English paper piecing one will come after that. And will probably come out of, um, like I have an idea of what it is. It's going to be about symmetry and um, not just if you're an experienced English paper piecer, this is going to be more about putting colors together and symmetry of your fabrics to get those wonderful kaleidoscope effects. Okay. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, Shirley is suggesting Changing Tides, I believe, is a store in Juneau. She visited it in 2018. Uh, yes. Once we uh, get closer to the dates, I will contact the stores so that they're ready for us and they may have a presentation for us or some special kits ready for us. Um, uh, yeah, we've got plenty of opportunity there. And Charlotte is asking about cabin assignments. Charlotte, yes, if you're wanting to, we can tell, 
look for the best cabin. Generally what we do as a service for our customers is we always know that you don't want to be too close to the elevators or stairways, but you don't want to be too far. You don't want to be below or above a public floor because you'll hear things and you want to be as much as in midship as possible. Long story short, we can assist with what location and what class if you'd want to go higher than your uh, veranda state rooms. And Gene, the price does include the last two days. This is why it's called the Denali Express Cruise Tour. So what you see on the brochure, that is exactly the entire thing that you're getting. So it does include the two days on the tour bus. And Lynn has said vaccinations required, right? Absolutely. At this point, they are still required, and I have a feeling they'll still be required next year. But again, that all could be subject to change. We go by whatever the protocol is by the CDC, because the CDC tells what the cruise lines what they need to do, and then the CDCs usually enhance it. We actually came back, um, John and I, we when uh, Celebrity Cruise Lines uh, opened up again for their cruises in June, this past June, we went from St. Martin to the Southern Caribbean and they really had their act together. And as I have mentioned many times to my customers and other guests that I felt safer on a cruise ship than I did going to the grocery store, grocery store because of all the protocols that they do have and they do take care of it. Great. Any last questions? We're gonna take a, so. Thank you very much, Ray and John, for showing up today. Um, this is going to be, um, I am going to put this up on YouTube if anybody's looking for, um, looking for it. Uh, it will also be in the Facebook group if anybody wants to refer back to it. And of course, if you have any questions going forward, just put them into the Facebook group or go to the website and ask a question there and John and Ray will look after you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you for, Thanks, Karen. for coming. Our pleasure. Bye -bye. Okay. So everyone, I'm just going to, um, thank you for showing up. It's just been a short little Q and a here, but don't hesitate. If you have any more questions, there will be an update on the classes, of course, October 1st, but there, going to be as described um and and that's it um next week on tuesday i have um let's just see next week on tuesday I, of course i've got my panel with uh angie and we will be talking about 100 days 100 blocks 2021 um and look for my latest video on this coming friday if you haven't watched it I talked about, I did a video last Friday on my crumb strip blocks and uh, everybody seems to enjoy them as much as I do. I'm so glad. Uh, somebody has asked me, what is the quilt behind me? That is Stash Buster number two. And I know somebody said today, oh, it's blue. <laughs> You don't like blue, but it is one of my favorite quilts. I do, I think out of my stash busters, this might be one of my favorites. So check that out too. You may see up above, I've got my, uh, everybody's always curious. So this is my uh, Hexi uh, soccer ball. And these are my other stash busters. I just keep them up here close and tidy. So anyways, thank you everyone for showing up. Uh, we, it's... If you haven't uh, seen last week's uh, Quilt Circle, take a look at that. That's with Emma Jones of Vintage uh, Sewing Box. A delightful woman talking about slow sewing. And if you haven't, just make sure you always subscribe so you're up to date on my latest video. Take care and I'll see you next time. <laughs>